So this is Microwaves in Action by Matthew Cola and Kian Loison, period one. So an introduction. Uh, our question was, how do microwaves work? More specifically, how does polarity and the presence of polar molecules affect the efficiency of microwave oven heating? Um, we had three proposed experiments that we thought up uh, before we actually chose one. Uh, the first one was to test the difference in heating depending on polarity using water and oil. Uh, water is a very poor substance and oil is a non-polar substance. So we would test polarity using those. Uh, the second was to test the effects of different containers and material uh, built up of different materials on heating efficiency within a microwave oven. So this would include uh, plastic, glass, metal, and ceramic. The fourth option was to test dry substances uh, versus liquid substances to test the both polarity and the state of matter and how it affects uh, the heating of the microwaves. Uh, the test we decided on was option one was, and it was to test the polarity um, using water and oil and see how polarity affected uh, the heating of each substance within the microwave. So an introduction to microwave oven technology, it was first discovered in 1945 by Percy Spencer on accident. And, um, it quickly became a household appliance by 1960 and revolutionized cooking. Microwaves uh, use magnetrons to gener generate electromagnetic waves. Uh, these cause water molecules in food to vibrate and heat up. Microwaves operate around 2,450 uh, megahertz, and um, this energy is absorbed by water, sugar, and fats and turned into heat. This was the main inspiration be behind us using water and um, oil because water is considered a very polar molecule, if not the most polar molecule, while oil is completely non-polar. Metal objects reflect microwaves, which is why your microwave is lined with metal on the outside to keep the microwaves in. So within the experiment itself, uh, we got rid of all uncontrolled variables by getting identical containers of the same weight, size, and shape. We measured out equal volumes of oil and water um, down to the milliliter, and we uh, used equal time heating intervals of 60 seconds for each down to the second. Um, during the experiment, we heated water and oil for 60 seconds each uh, 10 times and recorded the temperature before and after doing this. We allowed the microwave and the substances to return back to room temperature by leaving the microwave door open and leaving the substances to sit out long enough to return back to room temperature before uh, testing them again. So some errors and obstacles that we ran into was difficulty keeping internal microwave temperature at a constant because we could not accurately measure the internal microwave temperature. And so it was not easy for us to um, assure that it stayed constant, but by leaving it open long enough, we kind of um, like guaranteed that this uh, occurred. And another potential error was centering the container in the microwave because most of it came down to estimation and um, eyeballing it. So we had to uh, get it as close to the center as possible for each test, but it could vary um, in results. And some human error that it could possibly have occurred was with the thermometer volume and time intervals uh, on the thermometer and volume reading um, each value as well as during the time intervals of removing the substance from the microwave and um, recording the temperature could have varied from test to test. Hi, I'm Keen Larson and I'm going to be talking about the data from our experiment which clearly shows a higher increase in temperature from water compared to oil which verifies what the research suggested. And throughout all of our tests, this result held true and slightly varied between the numbers, but overall stayed the same. Um, so our results in teeth tests, here we can see a data visualization of the difference in slope of temperature increase with the graph on the right. And it shows a higher slope for water when we compare it to oil in terms of temperature increase. And the t-test verified our data sets and confirmed that the two sets of data were from different parties and did not take by some chance. For our results, we found out that our hypothesis was correct and this was proven with the results. 
and we accurately predicted the outcome with our knowledge of polar molecules and how they work with microwaves. Uh, given the background information on polar water content and its use in microwave heating, which the idea to test and verify this information by taking two substances, one polar and the other nonpolar. After testing, we verified that polar content is a key role in microwave oven function, and we provided insight into the chemistry behind microwaves. This emphasizes the idea behind microwave ovens because it shows how all substances can be heated within microwave ovens, but those who are polar are heated more effectively. Uh, and all food items typically contain water or polar content, which is why microwaves are ideal for cooking. And it also explains how they are not ideal for other purposes, such as heating in general. How does this tie into chemistry class? While the primary mechanism behind microwave heating is physical rather than chemical, we have learned that molecules can be polar with distinct positive and negative ends or nonpolar where charges are evenly distributed. And this experiment illustrates how this polarity influences how substances absorb energy and heat up. And this is why it's a perfect example of how the principles we study are not just theoretical, but also have a practical application in our daily lives, such as cooking.